I'm Mariola and in today's training video I will be talking about how we as HR professionals can support line managers in making reward decisions. When it comes to line managers, they are the direct link between the employee and management and are therefore at heart of all the management activities. They are the first people who will identify individual behaviour, pick up on what motivates certain individuals and judge the individual's ability to execute the task set out. Therefore, it's crucial that line management and human resources communicate effectively in all matters related to performance management to ensure a smooth and efficient run of the business. As such, this video will seek to identify how people professionals can support line managers in executing HR functions more precisely in making reward decisions. So the first question is, what is performance management? According to CIPD, People Professional Body, performance management describes the attempt to maximise the value that employees create. It aims to maintain and improve employees' performance in line with an organisation's objectives. It's not a single activity, but rather a group of practices that should be approached holistically. If people are the greatest creators of value in organisations, then good performance management is critical for an organisation's success. Performance management is therefore not only beneficial to the business, but to the individual as well, as it holds employees accountable for their performance within a company and is generally linked to reward and possible career progression. The ultimate goal of performance management is to create an environment where people can perform to the best of their abilities and produce the highest quality work. Individual, the performance management process usually starts when they first join the company, during the probationary period. It's where the individual will be expected to learn and develop at a given rate. Frequent reviews should take place during this time to establish any issues or to set targets going forward. For example, here at Montricon, we have a 12 week induction process where reviews take place at week one, two, four, eight, and 12, 12 week being the probationary period. Everything is recorded and noted on the induction pack, which is retained by HR after probation has been complete. During the individual review periods, employee has the chance to formally raise any issues, report back on how they feel they are performing and raise any further training requirements. This gives the line manager the opportunity to address any issues raised and to organise training if required. But the management of employees' performance does not stop once they finish their induction. After that, on an annual basis, departmental objectives are established in line with the organisation's strategy. It's like a waterfall effect, where objectives and targets are cascaded down from directors to senior management, then departmental managers, supervisors, and then individuals. Ob objectives will be set through the use of KPIs and SMART objectives. SMART objectives need to be S, specific, M, measurable, A, achievable, R, realistic, and T, timely. Ultimately, there is no point agreeing objectives or targets which are not going to be achievable for individuals. Now, part of performance management is also measurement of performance. And as explained by CIPD, measuring performance helps in identifying the success as well as highlighting the areas where the specific employees will be required to make improvements. Measurement of performance also helps in defining, tracking and analysing performance for the provision of future action. 
and some organisations also use a reward and recognition programme as part of the performance management approach. These approaches have to be genuine, specific, well thought and frequently used. In addition, some organisations use varied compensation models to calculate the employee's financial remuneration package. Some of the factors that may be considered include base pay, commission, bonuses, holiday allowances, as well as medical insurances. Now the measurement of performance in Montecon is done through the use of annual appraisals, which are conducted by line management. They are conducted through the use of two documents, part A, where the employee completes a self-assessment um, and they have the chance to honestly answer questions set out in the assessment. At the same time as the employee works on the part A document, the manager completes part B, where they rate employee based on competencies and are asked to explain and give reasons for the rating given to the employee. The line manager at the interview, appraisal interview, will address all points raised in part A and will then discuss each competency and their ratings. As far as is possible, agreement um, concerning the outcomes of the interview should be reached and recorded with objective set. These forms are then stored confidentially in HR. The appraisal process allows the employee and manager to talk on a one-to-one -one basis. Although the one-to-one -one chats should be taking place on a regular basis, the appraisal process makes it a more formal process as everything is discussed and documented. And it can be referred to at a later date if need be. It can be a stressful time for employees. Therefore, it's important that management are trained on how to conduct appraisal meetings appropriately. So how does the role of people practice support line managers when it comes to reward? As again, as explained by CIPD, employers tend to trust the information that they get from their line managers, as they are considered more closely attached to the employees than their senior managers. Based on this revelation, the HR department relies on the line managers to get feedback about their employees for reward judgment. It's the line managers that provide judgment on abilities of employees. As HR, we only know so much. We don't work or see the people day to day. So how do we know that they are good at their job or not? It's therefore down to line managers to communicate that with us. Line managers also help to provide information about their employees, which makes it possible to reward them appropriately based on their diverse aspects. For instance, line managers provide a review of the performance of every employee within their supervision. They also regularly check on their staff, identifying those experiencing challenges, hence are able to make appropriate judgment. As explained by Russell et al 2018, Line managers should be provided with the necessary training for them to manage their staff, develop appropriate communication skills and deal with difficult conversation and therefore make decisions. Secondly, they need a climate that is fostered by senior management that encourages rewarding people management responsibilities. For example, at Montrecon, our production line managers have all been promoted from within. So it was extremely important to provide them with the appropriate training um, so they had the right tools to do their jobs. We also conduct regular training sessions um, for any new procedures and communicate with our line managers if anything changes in our policies. It is down to the line managers to then communicate um, all of that down to their employees. Now going back to appraisals, we also conduct appraisal training for all of our managers who are involved in the process of conducting them. We carry out training sessions so that staff are equipped and know how to handle difficult conversations that sometimes do need to take place, how to handle conflict during a meeting 
and how to ensure fairness and consistency is carried out among, amongst all staff in terms of performance management and reward. For example, um, after an appraisal is conducted, the line manager and HR will sit down together um, to discuss and establish if based on objective set, the individual requires any further training and development to help them to achieve their goal and or if any reward should be given for the past work well done. It's the line manager who provides information about performance and also behaviour aspects as they are directly involved with the employees. Reward decisions are not only conducted on an annual basis, we also conduct them periodically at the end of probationary periods, following completion of um, a training programme um, and when employees are performing exceptionally well through assessment of KPIs and objectives achieved. Blanket rewards such as annual pay increases or bonuses which tend to affect pretty much all of our staff may not be enough of a reward for some employees. Um, and at the same time, some employees might value other rewards more than financial rewards, um, such as working from home opportunities and the likes of that. The HR and line managers therefore work together and with the support of HR, the line managers are aware of any updates such, um, such as minimum wage changes or any sickness legislation updates. Um, and HR also keep line managers informed of any other rewards that might not already that they might not already be aware of, such as um, other financial or other non-financial rewards available in the workplace. Managers, line managers, are encouraged by senior management, i.e., senior management and directors, to encourage rewarding people management responsibilities. In line with support and advice from HR. They are the ones making decisions on reward. Ultimately, this is why line managers are a crucial part when it comes to judgment and establishing rewards for their departments. If you have any further questions about performance management or reward or anything discussed in this video, please speak to your local HR advisor. Thank you.